As Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands abdicates in favour of her eldest son, Crown Prince Willem Alexander, the cost of running European monarchies, especially in these straitened times, has once again become an issue. Francis Robinson is joining us from Brussels. Francis, the Dutch royal family is probably one of the most expensive of the lot. Yeah, it does look that way. I mean, we've got some interesting figures which have actually been compiled by a professor because it's a very hard thing to estimate overall. It's really comparing apples and oranges. Some countries have a civil list which covers absolutely everything. Some of them give allowances, but then they'll pay for the buildings or certain official engagements and things. So it's hard to, to assess exactly how much he, the, these things cost. But this professor at Hent University has uh, come up with some figures, and it's true that the Dutch do come out looking like a pretty pricey option. But it does look as if so perhaps um, you know, some countries like uh, the Netherlands, like even Norway, are quite expensive. They really don't seem to have cut things back at all. But you know, during the austerity period, for example, in the UK and especially in Spain, there have been quite, uh, quite big cutbacks in, in how much people are paying for, the countries are paying for their monarchies. Right, exactly. So there's a general mood of austerity across Europe. Now, it does look a bit like the Commission might be changing tack on that. But for the moment, we're still in full-on austerity mode. So it's very hard to say to taxpayers, you know, actually, we're, we're going to spend, keep spending your money on palaces and banquets and, and uh, fancy cars and things at a time when people are having to fire nurses and teachers and stuff like that. So the Spanish have taken uh, an absolute cut in what they receive. Uh, in Belgium, they've had an interesting compromise, which is that the amount the king receives every year can't be changed. It's agreed at the beginning of his reign uh, what his civil list will be. So he started with about six million euros a year back in 1994. Uh, however, because Belgium is a very interesting exception to everywhere else, salaries are indexed here. So everybody gets an automatic pay rise every year and the king is no exception. His, his amount that he receives every year goes up because of inflation. So this year, what he did as a compromise is he took the increase, which was about 300,000 euros, and he said, well, I'll spend that on uh, maintaining buildings and things that the public would normally have paid for anyway. Fra so Fra it's a gesture, certainly. Fra in, Fra in, Fra in this what, is what is interesting here, though, is that the popularity of the monarchies doesn't seem to have fallen despite perhaps all the problems and the austerity and everything else. Right, exactly. Like poll after poll shows that Europeans are very fond of their royals. Like particularly in Denmark, they're really big fans of Margareta. You know, even here, the the royal family certainly have their their ups and downs. Uh, one of the sons is a bit gaff prone, but they're you know they're still kind of seen, particularly in in the south, very favourably overall. So it's true that there does seem to be an attachment. Uh, you know, at a time when you think. Perhaps it would be like the French Revolution. But, and but even so, I mean, Queen Beatrix is abdicating. But no, they're still very popular. I mean, even so, Queen Beatrix is abdicating after only 33 years on the throne, whereas over here, our Queen Elizabeth II has been, she's just celebrated 61 years on the throne, and her son, <laughs> uh, Prince Charles, is prob probably getting a bit itchy to take her place. Right, exactly. I mean, Charles has still got a lot of time to, to dedicate to his architecture and gardening and all of his projects on the side because uh, there's no sign that she's planning to go anywhere. And if you think how old the Queen Mum was, you know, she could be there for quite some time. So it's an interesting debate that, that people are having now. And it's the same in Belgium as well. The, the King, um, he's had some health problems. And certainly uh, in the last political crisis in Belgium, he had a very key role. He was a kind of sounding board for all these grumpy politicians. And he would take people off to one side and have a quiet word with them. And he had a very active role. And, you know, we're going to have elections again in Belgium soon. He might be getting a bit too old to do that. So, you know, it depends. He, he may feel the same way. But certainly uh, Queen Elizabeth II doesn't show any sign of wanting to give up. One of the interesting things uh, that I, apparently this survey seems to show as well, Francis, is that despite all that, the cost of the French presidency is a lot more. Right, exactly. Um, I always think about this when we're at the summit and the, 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 the various leaders and heads of state come in. The French always have a really swish car and they always have a really nice kind of little silk tricolor with gold fringing around the edge. And no other leaders have that. So there is a kind of lavishness to the office of president that means that he's not just a prime minister or whatever, he is the head of state as well. So when you put it like that or you think of the cost of running a presidency, I mean, just because he won an election rather than getting the job because of who, he dad, who his dad was, he still has to have a fancy car and a coach <laughs> and some horses and a, an armoured guard and whatever. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting question that actually having a republic seems to cost just as much, Pat if not more. Pageantry of one sort of another. Thanks a lot, Francis. Very kind.